Far away in another part of the city, Dr. Franz is working in his laboratory. Strange, I haven't heard from Danny. I hope he hasn't... Ah, that must be Danny now. Hello? Hello. Hello, have you back? Can you hear me all right through this portable wireless telephone? Yes, yes, Danny. Uh, where are you? I'm in prison in an iron cell below ground somewhere in City Park. I'll tell you more about it later. Uh, what can I do to help? Well, I need some more electric juice in my magic ray machine. Yes, yes. If I can get some more juice, I may be able to burn through these iron plates before the water rises too high. Water rises too high? Are you in danger? Look, Doc, please don't ask questions. Just do as I say it. Your only chance to help. All right, Danny. I I'll do what I can. Good. Now hook up that energizer of yours to the radio locator. Tune in the midget antenna in my blue beetle helmet and shoot some energy through to me. You know, like you did last time. Oh, certainly, boy, certainly. Uh, just a minute now. There. There's the locator working. Two points west. And a half more. Ah, that's it. Hello, Danny. Danny, my dial indicates contact. Okay, Doc. Okay, shoot the juice through. Here it comes. Hello, Danny. Are you getting anything? Yeah, sure thing, Doc. Coming through fine. The power of my magic ray is building up. Now look, I'm going to try to burn my way out of here. I have to work above my shoulders. The water's up to my chest already. Well, hurry, Danny. Hurry. Now listen, Doc. Listen, here it burns. I'm cutting right through the steel with my magic ring. Hurry, Danny. Hurry, boy. Hurry. Doc, Doc, can you give me a little more juice? I can't give you any more. You're getting the limit. Okay, Doc. Okay. The water's up to my neck, but there's only one more side to cut away. Then I'll be able to put... Danny. Danny. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Answer me, Danny. What happened? What happened, Danny? And so, Chief, I turned on the valve and let him drown. I am sorry. He was a clever boy, but uh, too honest. What do you want done with that girl reporter? She must uh, disappear. Five minutes, please. I'll take care of it. Good. Listen, I am a respectable businessman. Everybody know I'm a respectable. I am a friend to everybody. You are my agent. You take care of a thing. Some day you'll be police commission. Thanks, Chief. And now you go. Take Rocco and a bug with you. No, this way. Yeah. Nobody must see you leave my house. And remember, if my name is connected with this, you will also disappear. Permanently. Meanwhile, in the subterranean hideout, a ghostly figure is stealing up a winding stairway. Ahead of him, a spotlight plays on the wall as he mounts. In the middle of that circle of light is a large blue beetle. What's that noise? Just a minute. I'll see what I can do for you. Who are you? The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Who are you? John Mason of the Chronicle. How did you get in there? Some man put me in here. Hey, don't ask questions. Get me out of here. I'm cold and I'm no, hungry. No, no, take it easy. I'll see if any of the master keys I have will fit. There you are. Hey. Hey. You're a good-looking girl. Never mind the compliments. Let's get out of this place. First, tell me how you got in. Well, I told the editor of my paper I wanted to work on this case. Dangerous work for a girl. Oh, I love danger. You must. Go on. Well, today I saw a horseman disappear in the bushes at the foot of the cliff. When he didn't reappear, I grew suspicious. So tonight, I decided to investigate. Just as I pushed my way through the bushes, I heard a horseman coming. I ran along the foot of the cliff. I must have tripped and fallen, because the next thing I remember, I was lying at the bottom of the old abandoned bear pit. Yes? And then what happened? I noticed a large iron trap door in the floor of the pit. I raised it and found a flight of stairs. 
It was pitch dark, but I decided I was going to finish what I started. So I descended. In pitch darkness? Yes, I've got to show that editor that a woman can make as good a reporter as any man living. <laughs> I see. That accounts for it. Go on. Pretty soon, I turned a corner. I saw a light. By lantern light, a man was reading some documents. He must have heard me because he flashed a spotlight in my eyes. I turned to run, but it was too late. He grabbed me and put me in that room there where you just found me. How would you like to help me catch the killer? And also get a front-page scoop for your paper? I love it. Very well. I think we're going to see some action very soon. You stay hidden until I can get a gun for you. Can you shoot? Sure, I'm a Texas Ranger's I daughter. Go up and unlock the girl's cell and bring her down to my office. Oh, boy, will I? She's a beautiful... Why, it can't be. Why, he's very much alive and ready to nip. Rock off. Rock off. Cover the agents. You mustn't get out of here alive. We'll see who gets out of here alive, you foul murderer. Your time's up. Oh, yes. Well, I can still shoot free. <laughs> Your killing days are over. You can't injure the blue beetle. Little kick with my foot and you're disarmed. And this, and this, and you're out like a light. Come on, you thug, Roscoe, or Paco, or whatever your name is. You're first. Hey, boss, boss, you get him from that side. And I'll get him from And the blue side. beetle will get you both like this, by the throat. <laughs> I ought to strangle you both, but I'll let the law do that. You and your chief here and the old, so reputable Scarletti. There, I'll just knock your head together. Let go of you and let you fall. Miss Mason, you can come out now. Oh, I'm already out. I had these men covered with the gun you kicked out of the killer's hand. That's fine. Now, here's your chance to get a scoop for your paper. Well. You know Scarletti? Sure, he's the big wine distributor. Yes, and he's also the top man of the underworld. He's bigger than the Duke, the Octopus, and a lot of others. Really? That respectable businessman? The same. If his scheme for political control had clicked, the killer there would have been made commissioner of police. That murderer? Yes. Wow, what a diabolical scheme. Yes, the city would have been systematically robbed and the police made helpless. Oh, what a story for the Chronicle. Why, this story will make me... I hope so. What are you going to do? The Blue Beetle has one more call to make tonight. Hello. Hello. I'm a teller you I'm a respectable businessman. I know. No. How much money? Mm-hmm. So much time I wish I was not so honest. No, I know one of some part of it. Why you not talk to someone like the the Adder? He's a crook, but me, I'm a respectable businessman. Go by. The blue beetle. Yes, the blue beetle, you hypocrite. Why you come here? I'm a respectable... Yes, I know you're a respectable businessman to most of the world. But not to the blue beetle. What do you mean? You know, kind of pick. That's the noise. She's at the law. Coming for you, Scarletti. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, your sins have found you out. Your candidate for police commissioner is already a prisoner. Incriminating documents connecting you with many murder projects and underworld rackets are in the hands of the York City Chronicle and will be published. Put down that gun, Scarletti. It's too late for... Oh. You choose suicide rather than face the music. Well, your death will help to clean up a lot of rackets. Open up in the name of the law and open this door. Break it in for Coleman Mandigan. The Blue Beetle has a present for you. All right, Blue Beetle. All right, I've got you covered. Wait. He's gone. Hey, Mandigan. Look on the floor there. It's Charletti. He's wounded. There's a note pinned to his body. Yes. It says that Scarletti is king of the underworld. A present from the Blue Beetle to Detective Mannigan. (laughs) 
again the Blue Beetle has crossed swords with Gangland and come off the winner. Can the great city now rest in peace? Will the criminal element lie low now that their hypocritical chief has been unmasked? Let's look in on Dr. Flam's little apothecary. Well, Danny, you, you certainly had me worried when your voice was suddenly cut off in that flooded cell. <laughs> Boy, that was a close call. The water rose to the level of my mouth just as I finished cutting a way out of that cell. Yes. I had to swim underwater to the stairway, but when I reached that, I was safe. Well, now, Danny, I... Uh, you'd better get some rest. Uh, it's almost daylight. Uh, you can turn in on the couch there. Oh, thanks, Doc. I think I will. Uh, uh, excuse me. Hello? Who? Dan Garrett? Yes. Yes, he's here. Oh, uh, Danny. Hmm? Uh, it's for you. Okay. Hello? Dan Garrett speaking. Oh, hello, Manigan. You did? Gee, that was great. You ought to get a promotion. Huh? Insurance racket. Well, that sounds like an interesting assignment. The commissioner wants to see me at 8 o'clock in his office? Okay, I'll be there. Good night. Sorry, Doc, I can't stay with you. I've got to get home and lay out my dress uniform. I'm due at the commissioner's office in a few hours, and I've got to look my smartest. So long, Doc. There's no rest for the law. And so Dan Garrett gets ready for a new assignment. What will develop in the insurance racket? What new dangers will he face? Can it be that there are still some criminal masterminds at work in the great city? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. Copyrighted Fox feature appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in.